Hey guys, this is Srini and welcome back. In this video, let's continue the topic of ensembling multiple train networks. Uh, the one that we started in the last video for image classification. Now let's actually do pixel classification, which is semantic segmentation. Uh, two, three videos ago, I mean, we looked at a whole bunch of unit and semantic segmentation. So this is uh, consider this a follow up of that discussion where we basically ended by looking at uh, backbones such as ResNet, Inception and VGG for a unit. Uh, and to see like, okay, how does the segmentation look like with each of these models? Now in this tutorial, let's train these three networks independently and then take the prediction, which is the output, and then ensemble them to get the best output okay now uh, uh the trick here is okay we are going to train these three networks anyway okay and then we'll see what combination of these you know outputs is going to give us the best accuracy for the data set we are working on okay uh, so let's jump into the code again this is going to be very similar to the last tutorial and the the ones two tutorials before where we ended off uh, ended up by talking about uh uh, uh, ended up by talking about the semantic segmentations and other topics. So if you are a regular watcher and watch the last five to 10 videos, then you should be up to speed. Otherwise, I'll quickly introduce uh, stuff that uh, you may have missed if you haven't watched uh, the other videos, okay? So let's jump in and start looking at the code now. And uh, just a quick reminder that we are going to be using segmentation models library. Again, just pip install segmentation models because it, 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 it really makes it very easy for us to work with these type of uh, architectures, whether it is UNet, LinkNet, PSPNet, or FPN. Uh, and for now, we are going to focus only on UNet. And then you can also bring various backbones. Again, what do we mean by backbones? This is going to be used as your encoder part of the network and the decoder will be automatically defined by, by segmentation models, right? So when you define this backbone, we can also define the weights. All of these uh, backbones are trained on ImageNet. So we can start with predefined weights meaning we are probably not that far away from our segmentation, okay? Now, uh, in this video, I'm gonna use a VGG, probably 16, and then ResNet and Inception, but you, you can try any of these, okay? It's very easy, as you will see, and as you, you have already seen in the previous videos. Okay, and uh, installation, again, these are the requirements, and go ahead and pip install segmentation models, right? So the plan is, we are going to do this, and use unit framework and train these three models independently and then combine the predictions to provide a ensemble result. And this oftentimes works much better uh, on most instances com uh, compared to each uh, uh, individual model, okay? Now, let's get to the code part and let's, uh, I already trained it so we are not going to waste your time uh, you know, as part of this video. So uh, again, I don't want these to be longer than 20 to 20, 30 minutes, but hopefully it won't take that long. Okay, uh, importing the right libraries. Everything should be straightforward, except for segmentation models, right? If you haven't installed this yet, go ahead and pip install segmentation models. So this is, this is the key uh, library that we're going to use in this uh, video. Then all my images are 128 by 128. In fact, if I open this, uh, I have uh, images 128 by 128 and uh, masks, corresponding masks as 128 by 128. And each mask uh, has four labels, uh, one, two, three, four, okay, for each of the regions. So one of these regions, for example, the dark one is one and the other one is two. You see this, this, this region with some texture to it, this is two, this represents clay in this image. Uh, the grayish region is three and the brightest region is four. So I have four of these. Okay, and uh, uh, how did I get them? Again, go to www.appear.com, A-P-E-E-R.com, it's free. Uh, load your images, go ahead and uh, uh, paint your pixels to get the labeled images, download the labeled images. What, I did that on large images of size 768 by 768, and then I have broken them down into 128 by 128 patches, okay? So there you go. Now that you have some background information, uh, I'm defining my size X, size Y, number of classes four. Again, like I said, I have four regions of interest uh, that I would like to segment, semantic segment in my images. 
And here we are just reading the uh, images. Again, we have done this in many, uh, many videos. Uh, start with an empty list, populate the list with each image as we read it using uh, glob, I mean, sorry, using OpenCV, but glob to go through each file, okay? And then I'm converting that into a NumPy array. So at the end of this, what you get is uh, train images, if I can show you, train images right here. Uh, 1600 by 128 by 128 th by three array, okay? By three, because I'm reading these images as uh, RGB and not grayscale. Similarly, we are reading the masks, but we are reading masks as, uh, uh, as grayscale because of course, uh, these are masks with uh, four values again, one, two, three, four, right? I mean, for our pixels. We are going to then convert our pixels from one, two, three, four to zero, one, two, three, because no matter what your pixels are, like you can have uh, your uh, labels as uh, 25, 52, 75, whatever those labels are, you uh, you better convert them into zero, one, two, three, four. So when you do like, for example, IOU, intersection over uh, union calculations or something, it makes it easy to plot them onto a confusion matrix. And also during training, it makes it easy to keep track of things. So we're using label encoder to convert those into uh, the right label. So if you look at uh, what labels, oops, I shouldn't have done that. Sorry, uh, let's run this line only. Okay, so if you look at that, our array actually has values zero, one, two, three, right? And when we started off, it has values of one, two, three, four, as you'll see. That's all, that's all this step. Uh, this uh, you know that's all uh, this part of the code basically does that okay encoding the labels then we are dividing I mean expanding the dimensions of our uh, mask because of our masks are grayscale so I have uh, if you look at uh, train masks train masks uh, we have 1600 by 128 by 128 so we need to expand this by one. That's exactly what we did. And I called it mask input. So we have 1600 by 128 by 128 by one. So both my uh, uh, X and Y are train images and train masks, similar dimensions, right? I mean, basically the same dimensions there. Okay. I mean, when I say same dimensions in terms of the, the tubal, tuple size, and remember uh, for masks, we only have one channel. For our images, we have three channels for RGB. Okay. That's because the segmentation model here is uh, uh, expecting three channels. That's the only reason. Okay, and then I'm splitting my data into test and train. And uh, instead of training on the entire data set, I further uh, uh, you know, extracted a subset, only 50% of the whole thing, which left 720 images, 720 images for training and I did train on those. Now, one key point here is this is multi-class semantic segmentation. Anytime we talk about multi-class, the first thought you have to get is, okay, convert that into categorical if you're using deep learning. If it is random forest or something else, you're fine working with zero, one, two, three. But if you're working with deep learning, especially using uh, categorical cross entropy uh, uh, type of uh, loss functions, then uh, convert them into categorical. Again, I explained this in every video. Categorical is basically uh, one hot encoding your uh, your data. So if the label is two, you're basically uh, saying uh, converting that into one hot encoded vector because we have four classes here. Then you have zero, zero, one, zero because zero, one, two, three, right? I mean, these are the labels. Again, if, you, if you're confused by what I'm saying, go to my video about uh, categorical or one hot encoding and then and then please uh, uh, educate yourself on this topic. So eventually when uh, you, we convert this to categorical, if you look at Y train cat, it should have 720 by 128 by 128 by four for our masks, okay, instead of one because previously we had one because that one represented values between zero, one, two, three. Now we have four because now we are separating each of this into these. So uh, that's, what, that's what this part is. Again, I know I'm talking way too much about this, but it's very important uh, for semantic, for multi-class segmentation in general. Okay, now uh, uh, we are defining again uh, uh, the model itself or the parameters for the model. Total number of classes four, and because this is a, uh, again, multi-class, I'm going to use softmax as uh, the activation for the last layer. Otherwise, sigmoid, right? For binary classification, sigmoid for multi-class softmax. And my learning rate is whatever I defined here. And then the optimizer I'm gonna use is Adam optimizer. 
Um, the loss, instead of categorical cross entropy, let's actually use a combination of dice loss and focal loss. Okay, dice loss is like uh, intersection over union, uh, which is the right metric for semantic segmentation. And focal loss is, uh, uh, again, please read the original paper, but if you would like me to summarize this, uh, the core benefit of it, it works well with unbalanced data set. If you have one region that's easy to segment, the other one is difficult to segment, it kind of uh, uh, helps in these situations or unbalanced data sets, okay? So in this case, I'm going to combine these two with a multiplication factor of one to focal loss. If you put two to focal loss, obviously you're saying to me, focal loss is very important, right? But uh, uh, let's just go ahead and use this. And for metrics, again, accuracy doesn't make any sense for metrics, okay? Uh, this is semantic segmentation. Accuracy does make sense, but it's useless. Uh, IOU score and F score are the metrics we're going to track so we can plot them later on. Okay, so far so good and thanks, uh, hi, thanks. Sorry for going a bit fast because I literally explained these things in detail in the last six to seven videos and please watch them. I cannot, uh, if, if I keep explaining every little thing in every video, then each video would be one hour long. Uh, okay, now let's start defining each of our models. Okay, again, this is exactly what we have done before, but let's go through this. What is the backbone for the first one, ResNet 34, okay? and Anytime you're trying to fit this to, I mean, you have to pre-process data. Remember, we normalize the data. For example, we scale the data by dividing the pixels uh, values by 255 here. I haven't done anything yet because I want it to be done via this step. Get pre-processing from ResNet 34. However you did to, uh, you know, uh, original data on ResNet 34, do exactly the same to my data. That's what my pre-processing step here is doing, okay? So we did this, and uh, this is basically uh, defining how to pre-process, and then we are pre-processing our training and testing data set, okay? And then we are all set to define our model, okay? Our model is coming from segmentation models library, and I'm using UNET with a backbone of ResNet 34, OK, and uh, also download the weights. Uh, all of these backbones are trained on ImageNet. So let's go ahead and download the ImageNet weights. And in this case, I'm using four classes, right? We already defined the number of classes. And my activation is uh, 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 our uh, uh, softmax. OK, once you define your uh, model, now we are going to compile the model. OK, so the model is, uh, again, you need the optimizer loss function and uh, tracking metrics. So optimizer is Adam with a learning rate of 0 0.30 and 1, right? We define that. Total loss, loss is the combination of dice loss and focal loss. We already defined that earlier. Metrics is, again, IOU and F score. These are our metrics to keep track of. And we are all set to train it. Again, no, no tricks here, right? We have our X and Y values. Again, remember the categorical ones, X and Y values. And after this, save it. This is exactly what I've done. I saved the model. So we can play with that model now, okay? I did the same with Inception. Remember, here, this is ResNet 34. And here, this is Inception. Don't worry. Look for the link to the code down below in the description. And you can play with this yourself, okay? Uh, Inception, everything else is the same. Only thing I changed here is my backbone, that's it. And I'm saving this as model two, the first one as model one, and the last one obviously as model three with a backbone of VGG16, okay? So we defined these three models and independently trained these three models and saved the trained uh, weights, yeah, right there. That's it, now we are all set to start combining these outputs and then uh, creating our en ensemble, okay? Now, how do we do that? First of all, we need to load these. I've already loaded them. So I save these and I'm loading them right now. And see that I put compile equals to false. Otherwise, it tries to compile the model. And then it throws an error saying, hey, I don't know for total loss. What do you mean by total loss? Because it doesn't know uh, when you're importing the model. It doesn't know that. Now, we don't need that unless you want to train it further. We just want to load the model so we can do the predictions. So this is fine. Go ahead and say compile equals to false, okay? So we loaded these three models and now from here, this is new, okay? Until this point, I covered this in at least a couple other videos. Okay, now that we loaded this model, I'm going to create a list of these three models, right? Models is model one, two, and three. So this is basically, if you go up to my variable explorer, 
you'll see that my models is just a list of model one model two and model three why did i do that so i can go ahead and uh, uh you know predict on these in fact uh, did i do that maybe i don't even need to, uh, yeah i was actually this is a good important point i was doing this that's why i did the list uh, for each of this model i was predicting on my test data but that's the wrong thing to do because remember the pre-processing step if you go back to model 3 you are pre-processing using vgg16 framework okay however the pre-processing happened using vgg16 so if you just predict on x test it's going to be wrong because you haven't pre-processed the data the right way i hope this makes sense i have to predict vgg16 trained model on my x test 3 data which has been processed using pre-process input 3 okay this is the only subtle point here uh, meaning predict on the right data or do the right pre-processing so you can predict it the right way okay so that's what i'm doing here model one dot predict on what on x test one x test two for model two x test three for model three again x test three is what x test three is nothing but our x test except it has been pre-processed using vgg okay i'm stressing on this for a reason otherwise you'll get your results completely crazy believe me again you probably saw that in my last video on the unit unit topic okay so um, we predicted on these ones and i am capturing that predictions as an array i mean i converted that to a list of predict one predict two predict three and then converted that to an array so if you look my preds P-R-E-A-D-S right there, you can see that my predictions are 3 by 160 by 128 by 128 by 4. These three correspond to these three right there, okay? Prediction 1, prediction 2, and prediction 3, right? Each of this gave me an array of size 160 by 128 by 128 by 4, right? I have 160 images for testing. Each image is 128 by 128 pixels, and I have four classes to predict. That's why I have four here. And on the whole, I have three predictions or three models. That's why I have three here. I hope this is clear, okay? Maybe this is too basic to some of you, but for some people, not that basics. Now, uh, this is where now the trick comes. Now, these four that you're seeing here, this is the probability or the output right? We are using softmax. This is the probability for each class in each image at each pixel. This is the probability for that to belong to either class 0, 1, 2, or 3, okay? Now, what I'm trying to do is assign something called weights, okay? So I'm saying my model 1, I want it to be 40% in terms of weight. Model 2, 20%. Model 3, 40%. Okay, so these are the weights I'm assigning. So now we are doing a weighted ensemble. Okay, why 0 0.4, 0 0.2, 0 0.4? I have no clue. This is just a first guess. Okay, I'll get to that point in a minute. Let's assign some weights. Now, I want every probability to be multiplied by this. Every probability from uh, the first model to be multiplied by this from the second one to be multiplied by this and the third one with this and add all of those to give me a final probability well a final value probability typically is zero to one right uh, but this one will be more than that because we are uh, 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 maybe it's not because we are adding these to one then we are good okay so how do we do that uh, in numpy there is something called tensor dot okay the tensor dot in this example predictions and weights right so it multiplies predictions and weights and sums all of those along the axis defined here which is zeroth axis which is our three predictions again run this line by itself to understand this if you think this doesn't make sense to you okay the tensor dot is multiplying predictions with corresponding weights and adds those two along the axis that we describe so when you look at weighted threads here, weighted predictions, now you should get 160 by 128 by 128 by 4. The 3 is gone because those 3, we multiplied each channel with these numbers, right? The first one with this, second one with this, and the third one with this, and combined them, and we are capturing them as part of our fourth, uh, you know, uh, uh, as part of this fourth uh, shape in the tuple here. 
I hope that makes sense. And then the part, uh, the next part is the same as before. We are looking at argmax to tell us which one has the max value, and that is the prediction we are trying to assign to. Okay. Again, this is uh, uh, very straightforward, right? Again, if you if you are familiar with coding, if not, again, run each line, look at the output, and try to understand. So weighted ensemble prediction right now is again, if you look at the array, 160 by 128 by 128. The four is gone because we looked at the four. And then we said, okay, just give me the maximum value. That's it, you're done. So that shape is gone. So now I have 160 images, each 128 by 128. At every pixel, we have segmented, uh, uh, I mean, we have a pixel value, which is basically a segmented image, okay? And then we are looking at the argmax uh, for the uh, prediction one, prediction two, and prediction three. Why? Because I want to compare individual values for each model with the ensemble prediction. So remember, this is the prediction from all of these models put together in with a weighted average, okay? These are individual models from model one, model two, and model three, okay? Now let's go ahead and do the metrics. Once we are done with that, now let's go ahead and do the metrics. Maybe we'll run these lines, uh, in fact, uh, we are defining IOU 1, 2, and 3. Intersection over union for model 1, for model 2, for model 3, and for the weighted one, where we just calculated the weighted, right? So this is my IO intersection over union, and then I'm updating each of these with corresponding values. Again, Y test. How do you calculate intersection over union? You have your original values and you have your predicted values and you go ahead and compare these two, right? This is, this is use these two to calculate your IOU. That's exactly what we are doing right there, okay? This is the prediction and this is the original. The prediction, original for each of these. And then we calculate this. And now I'm just going to uh, print out the IOU score for all of these. So let's go ahead and print the intersection over union score for all of these. Now, if you look at this, for model one itself, if you only look at model one, the intersection over union is 90%. Not bad, it's, it's pretty good. For model two, it's 89.3. And model three, 92.4. For this ensemble, it's 92.3. In fact, the ensemble is not better than model three itself. If you just use model three, you're getting better results. Okay, now in this case, uh, again, this is uh, uh, because we started off with like good weights and then I did 50 uh, iterations and my labeling data is pretty good. So I'm getting very nice results. And, uh, uh, but there may be a combination of these, like if I change this to zero point, uh, for example, if I change this to zero point three, change this to point uh, five and, uh, 0.2 different weight, right? Let's run this calculation again to see what we get, okay? So now we actually got even less, like 91.2% instead of, uh, I'm, I'm looking for something that's more than this, right? I mean, when you want, when do you want ensemble? Uh, when the final result is better than individual results. And usually you can actually get that. We'll get that in a second, but I don't know how much we'll improve. Okay, uh, but this is the idea. Collectively, we are all stronger compared to just individual. Yeah, that's the idea here. And we saw this in the last video when we did the classification part. But this is this is a much more challenging one, but we're getting much better results this time anyway. So this part of the code, instead of manually changing these 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.2, I just did three nested loops here where each weight goes from zero to three. I mean, zero, it goes from zero, one, two, uh, three, and it goes from zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two, three, and then I'm dividing by 10, right? So it's actually going from zero to zero point, uh, uh, zero point three for each of these, okay? And doing what? Well, exactly the same calculation that we have done up here. I just put that in a nested loop and I'm printing out the the IOU values for the weighted average for each of the, these combinations in the hope that I'll find the best one. That's all this is. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. Now it's going to combine my weight one, weight two, weight three, as you see on the screen. First, zero, zero, zero. We get like crappy result, right? I mean, obviously if the weights are zero, 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 not much segmentation going on. Then your segmentation is, I don't even know why, uh, 3.4, maybe, uh, 
uh, anyway, let's not worry about that and let's go down to 0, 0, 0 0.1. We get 92.47. If I go back up, you see 92.47 because 0, 0 and something else is all the combination. I mean, it's, it's, it's basically the it's basically the last one right uh the third model itself so anyway we are combining all of these in different ratios and uh, which one is the maximum one so i actually printed out the maximum down here so the max iou we are getting is 92.7 percent using a combination of 0 0.1 0 0.1 and 0 0.3 okay what was the uh, best one before uh, 92.73 right so what did we have before not much of an improvement but slight improvement we had 92.47 now we got 92.73 I mean it's it's good to begin with now it's getting slightly better and again just imagine if you have the right models uh, trained on humongous amount of data then for prediction you just have these five six seven eight models how many ever you trained and then take the ensemble to get the best one okay now let's say we got this ensemble now we know that okay the weighted average of 0.1 and 0.1 and 0.3 is the best combination let's go ahead and predict a few of these so my optimal weights is uh, my max i mean the, these values 0 0.1 0 0.1 and 0.3 and uh, let's go ahead and uh, do the remaining part here which is now this part we already saw right we are using the tensor dot product to instead of weights now we are combining that with optimal weights which is our 0 0.1 0 0.1 0 0.3 and then arg max as you know you know uh, converts this into uh, ensemble prediction so uh, let us uh, let us uh, in this part of the code what i'm trying to do is uh, let me decrease the size so you guys can see the whole thing uh, I'm randomly uh, loading an image, okay, and then pre-processing using input one and two and three, meaning for the three models, I'm getting the data ready, okay, With, for the three models we are uh, talking about, and then we are predicting using these three and getting the ensemble and then just plotting out. So at the end of this, you should see the prediction for the ensemble so let's switch to plot so there you go that's not bad right i mean this is the input image this is the label ground truth and this is the prediction on the test image they are identical we're getting excellent segmentation results let's do a couple more there you go label and image exactly the same label and image they almost look identical actually including this uh, dot down there this little dot down here and you see this tiny dot here that is the misclassification if you just run a uh, if you just run like a, a morphological erosion operation and then dilation or like closing operation or opening operation actually where you del uh, dilate uh, i mean erode and then dilate i think much much of this will be cleaned up but uh, as you can see very good results so far and I bet individual one of these, each one of these models will actually give you uh, similar decent results in my case. But I don't know how your how much challenging your samples are going to be. But anyway, if you are confused about which model works for you, whether it is VGG or ResNet or something, well, train it on all of these and then use Ensemble like I'm showing you here. And this really again i cannot show certain examples where this shot solved uh, because they belong to a customer samples but uh, this came to the rescue really this came to the rescue because what i was trying to segment didn't have a lot of feature differences and uh, vgg does a great job for certain type of features inception for certain type of features and uh, other models for certain type of features trained on each of these of course uh, you had to parallelize this somehow if you have multi gpu uh, otherwise it may take uh, a long time sequentially and then combine the results and it actually did miracles when I did that that's why I'm sharing this video with you guys using data that I can show as part of my video recording so I hope you guys found this video to be useful educational and I know you love this so please go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe to this channel thank you very much and let's meet in the next tutorial again